This is Speaking with the Enemy on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Here is Louis Butko. Yes, it is. Speaking with the enemy, Louis Butko here getting set for Friday's week four matchup against the Edmonton Elks. And here to discuss is the host of the Edmonton Elks pre and post game show on Ched in Edmonton. It's Brendan Escott. And uh, Brendan, uh, this might sound like a silly question, but the Elks are an 0-3 football team. Are they an 0-3 football team, though? <laughs> yeah, they are right now, Louis. This is... This is um a a place where I don't think Chris Jones wants the football team to be, but is also very understanding that there's got to be one foot in front of the other here while they slowly rebuild, um, you know, a pretty significant portion of the football team. So what we've seen is a a quite the revolving door uh, of personnel, especially on defense. And uh, while we've seen the margin of defeat narrow, of course, getting blown out by BC in week one, and then a little bit better in week two. And then finally you get it to within seven points, but you know, they got to find a way to, to hold the lead, play with the lead, hold the lead. And Chris Jones says that until we can figure out a way to do that, that no, this is an 0-3 football team right now. Yeah, and the, the Ticats definitely know the feeling about, uh, you know, not playing to to lose, but actually playing to win when we look at what the Ticats have done the last three weeks, too. So if the Elks are going to figure it out against the Ticats this week, where is it going to need to start? It's a good question because there's been a lot of things that offer you promise on the offensive side of the ball, especially they've, they've got some playmakers there, right? We know how much money they spent in the off season on Kenny Lawler. And we know when they target Kenny Lawler heavily, what he can do. The one game that Darrell Walker wasn't on the opposite part of the field. He went off for a career high 12 catches, you know, on 17 targets, also a career high. So uh, we know that there's pieces there. What I'd like to see more of though, is, is the finish. Last week, we saw even Lawler drop a couple of passes. That was a a drive killer early in the game that you could sort of see as some momentum that didn't carry forward and maybe had an impact. And in week two, that was Caleb Hawley, who was trying to fill in for for Darrell Walker, who had a couple of serious drops. So I, I think they're missing some finish on that side. And then I look at the balance in the run game, and I say James Wilder Jr. is such a part of the heartbeat of this team, right? You guys are well-versed in, in who he is from his great rookie season with the Argonauts. Uh, but I don't see a whole lot of balance in the game right now. I see him failing to rush for more than 50 yards in each of the first three weeks. So uh, they got to find a little bit more balance and a little bit more finish. And we'll see if that results in a better, uh, you know, if it results in the win column. What is the confidence level in Edmonton uh, from the fans, from people you talk to around the team in Nick Arbuckle? Because he's always been one of those quarterbacks that's been interesting to watch and an, an unorthodox way to get to Edmonton but how, how much belief in the in is there in Nick Arbuckle right now well it, it, listen it, I think it's different if you're listening to him speak to the media and analyze the games that they've that they've lost and and his team's performance and his own performance I think there's probably more reason for confidence than if you're just looking at the box score because yes he does lead or is tied with Dane Evans for the lead league in interceptions and there's been two of those in consecutive weeks that have come at crucial times and again I say you know it looked like kind of a, a misread or he just didn't see the linebacker underneath and that flipped the game on its head it's not as if that was just one turnover that flipped the whole game around so is there confidence in Arbuckle's on-field play yes there's certainly been some reason for it, but I think he does have to do a lot more in order to really cement that because, frankly, among the fan base, uh, Louis, I'm sure you can appreciate with all the change that we've had in, in the last couple of COVID years, uh, you know, there's some some uncertainty and some trust to to be built back that I know uh, President Victor Quee is working really hard on as well. So uh, when Arbuckle starts turning those results on the field into wins, then I think the confidence level is going to go way up. Uh, you mentioned the, the trust level, and uh, I, I guess fans could be remiss if they, they didn't really trust Chris Jones considering the way things ended the last time around. But does he still have some, some trust to rebuild in the city, or is he, is he trusted as, as the guy in Edmonton right now? Well, hey, he's looked at right now as the guy to turn it around. And I think when the decision was made, I think it was widely accepted that he was probably the only guy to turn it around in a market that needed somebody who understood 
what the Elks are to Edmonton. So I know Jones did leave for greener pastures. And the fact is he took a promotion to go to Saskatchewan after winning the Grey Cup, right? He went from head coach in Edmonton to head coach in GM. So there was reason and motivation for him to leave. Uh, I think when you look at the players that he's brought in and seeing who wants to come play for Chris Jones, that's what that should be based on for fans moving forward. And, and I, I think that again, he's got enough of a reputation in the CFL that the, that confidence and the belief is still there. Check in with me mid season and we'll see again. <laughs> uh, okay. So the Edmonton Elks will win this game on Friday. If what, what has to happen? They have to get pressure on Dane Evans. I they they just have not been doing enough on the defensive side of the ball to create turnovers. I know they've got Colin Kelly now on that offensive line for Hamilton. They got to find a way to get some pressure on him. And uh, losing Jake Ceresno was big on the D line. Thomas Costigan's going to have to step up. Mac Henry, a Canadian, we've seen uh, on the defensive tackle position make a couple of plays. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's it's guys like Matthew Thomas that are converted receivers and and uh, and that sort of thing that have been filling the gaps. So if they can get some continuity on the defensive line there and get some pressure on Dane Evans tonight, maybe maybe even come up with an interception. I know it sounds crazy. We're three weeks into the season. The Elks don't have one yet. So somebody go and force a takeaway and maybe swing the momentum in your favor for a change. And then, Louie, I think that they might emerge victorious from the donut box. Now, Trey Ford is a uh, a player who who gets a lot of attention at the in this neck of the uh, the woods here, um, you know, because he's from Niagara Falls, just uh, right behind me, actually, uh, okay. down the road there. Um, but is there a belief in Trey Ford in the city of Edmonton, and uh, and what have you seen from him through the first uh, month of this season that that maybe is uh, encouraging for you? His willingness to to be a sponge for everything around this football team has been exciting to watch. And yeah, if you show up to the stadium and you watch a game, there's already people wandering around in Trey Ford jerseys as if he is the future of this club. So we saw him in some spot action in week one, and it looked like a quite a bit and probably too soon for him. He was saying afterwards he didn't even really know what packages. Well, he knew the packages, of course. He didn't know when that was going to go in the game. So uh, they haven't put him back in at the quarterback position since, but I know that the grooming process has been well underway. You know, you see him on the field at practice and he's getting the extra work in with the receivers. And and one thing that they're not doing with him is, you know, he's so athletic and he's so mobile but they're not plunking him out at the wideout spot, which is something that Chris Jones is known to do. They've got Kai Loxley in there, another quarterback, the third stringer. He's been playing slot back the last couple of weeks. So for uh, for fans of, of Trey Ford, the quarterback, be encouraged by the fact that it looks like he, he actually is the future of quarterback for this team. And of course, when you invest the first round capital in him, then there's got to be that in mind as well. Great person too. Yeah. Uh, before we let you go, uh, you mentioned Victor Chu, and I, I, I think he's got to be looking at what the new owner in BC is doing and the the turnaround that that team has had in its early sample size. But you have to think that Victor's looking at BC, thinking we can do that. How do yeah, they Vic- do that in Edmonton? Well, hey, Victor has been uh, as as progressive, I think, a president in pro sports that I've ever seen, just be it by his Twitter presence or, or sort of understanding that it does mean something for him to be seen out there actually painting the Elks logo on the field, right? Like that shows the community, his investment. And I think that it shows, I've heard members of the football team talking about, you know, joking about Victor Quee out on the field, you know, getting his hands dirty. So uh, I think it's about setting that precedent in that overwhelming, like heartfelt investment in the team. And and he's a leader in that realm. So watching him do it in the position that he's in, I, I really think that the community is starting to catch on and, and perhaps a younger portion of the fan base too. A lot of the initiatives we've got going on are obviously are targeting a bit younger of a fan base. So Victor being a younger, more forward thinking guy, I think that there's a lot of room for him to connect there moving forward. Awesome. Well, Brendan, really appreciate it. I uh, I feel more knowledgeable about the Elks than I have all season, although it was a very low bar to set. Uh, so uh, thank you for doing this, Brendan. This has been Speaking with the Enemy on the Ticats Audio Network.